Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Frustration for local manufacturers who've got good jobs open but are fighting an uphill battle to fill them. It's the warmest day of the year so far with tomorrow looking even hotter. And of course, that brings a chance of rain. What happened at Ford Field today? Something top health experts are calling the key to defeating COVID-19. We're glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 6 and the coronavirus tops our report as President Biden calls for states to speed up access to the vaccines. The president, in fact, has moved his deadline for all adults to be eligible for vaccination to April 19th. That's about two weeks earlier than his original deadline. Michigan is one of the states where all adults are already eligible. Right now, nearly 37% of Michigan adults have gotten one or more doses of the vaccine. Starting tomorrow, Wayne State University is going to suspend in-person classes and spring sports for 10 days as Metro Detroit continues to see this surge in cases. Wayne State says it will decide if things will resume or if it'll be extended at the end of the 10 days. Today, Michigan reporting 4,964 new cases, just short of 5,058 additional deaths reported over the last 24 hours. In more than a year of fighting the spread of COVID-19, we've seen the strategy shift uh, just like it would in an actual war. And right now, health experts say the key to victory is getting shots in the arm arms of younger people, the age groups that are really fueling the spike in cases. Sean Lay live at Ford Field at this hour, where today Governor Whitmer and her daughter hope to try to set an example, Sean. They did symbolically. They got the shots, but it was symbolic in saying a lot of parents should be doing the governor saying what she is doing. However, here's the big picture, guys. This is a race to vaccinate as the numbers of positive cases become more and more alarming. In fact, look at the reaction of the director of Protect Michigan when I asked her her thoughts on the numbers the past two weeks or so. I'm scared, uh, frankly, and mainly because I'm a mother of an almost four-year-old, so it's very personal. It is personal. That's why Governor Whitmer got her first vaccine shot at Ford Field today, and she brought her 19-year-old daughter along with her to get her shot. There is now an intense focus on getting young people vaccinated after. Then 30 to 39, then 40s, and we're also still seeing increases in, in 10 to 19. Their young people are inherently very social. Um, if they aren't going to get vaccinated, we're going to really not be able to get through this next few months. Dr. Betty Chu gave her son Aiden his first dose of vaccine today. I feel like I'm here as a mom more than I'm here as a doctor, and I think for all of us, the biggest thing that we care about is protecting our family. It's the key to social gatherings and state and um, sports events and proms and stuff like that. A number of teens, 16 and older, got shots as part of the governor's event at Ford Field. Mom Verenda Strotter says she got a shot. She did not hesitate to bring her son here to get hit. I would tell the moms to make sure they do their research. The science says that this is the way for us to get herd immunity and to make sure that we are able to return to normalcy. So I would say if you can get your child vaccinated, go ahead and do it. I was very nervous. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I just think that many people of my age should go and get it if you're tired of wearing masks and want to go back to normal. All right, back here live at Ford Field, you saw the governor getting her shot. She said no new restrictions coming from her office or the state health department. The big focus is on vaccinations at 16 and up right now, really focusing on young people. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4, back to you. All right, all right, Sean. Well, you know what? We couldn't have asked for a better June day than the one we're getting today, which is uh, what, April 6th? Really perfect weather <laughs> today. And Ben's here with a look at uh, this nice, unseasonably warm stretch. We have penciled in an extension of this for tomorrow, guys. In fact, we'll probably beat our temperatures today once we get into tomorrow afternoon. But we're at 78 right now, and we're doing it without a ton of sunshine out there, too. So that air is definitely warm. We will be watching the northern part of the state, at least northern lower Michigan. There are thunderstorms ongoing, and you can see they're kind of moving to the east-southeast. So we're watching the north zone specifically uh, here over the evening hours. We're not anticipating anything strong or severe, but you can see there's a couple downpours and lightning 
lightning strikes out there. So we're going to continue to watch that as we go through the next few hours. Otherwise, the temperatures staying incredibly mild tonight. So if you've got the windows open, well, you'll probably have to close them at some point tonight. But 61 by midnight, that's still above our average high for this time of year. So coming up, we're going to talk rain chances and see how far we're going to fall when the temperatures turn. You can get a sneak peek of our 10 day forecast in the local forecasters app. And of course, track those storms that are coming in tonight, all free in your app store by searching WDIV. Guys. All right, Ben. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson declined to attend the state Senate Oversight Committee hearing on election issues, saying she feared the spread of further disinformation. Well, tonight we've learned of productive discussions between Benson and the committee chair. Mara McDonald has the new developments coming to us out of Lansing. Mara. And Devin, it would appear that Secretary Benson and Senator McBroom, who chairs that committee, at least the two of them are heading towards a meeting. Let me show you. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson declined to appear in front of the Michigan Senate Oversight Committee, saying she was concerned that the hearing would start misinformation swirling. This morning, Benson and the senator who chairs that committee, Ed McBroom, got on the phone and talked it out. Benson sending McBroom this letter after their discussion, which in part reads, I appreciated the conversation a great deal and am optimistic we can find ways to work together towards our mutual goal of ensuring all citizens have rightfully placed faith in the integrity of our elections and strength of our democracy. Now, while the Senate Oversight Committee has heard from multiple people of all political persuasions, there have been some which have testified heavy on the conspiracies and short on the facts. I have seen no evidence that there is either a massive organized attempt at fraud or a massive unorganized attempt at uh, committing voter fraud that has impacted the outcome at all. That said, McBroom sees room for improvement. I don't think that anybody can look at what happened in the run-up to the election with all the confusion about the rules and all the court cases, um, all of the um, disorganization that happened on election day, and then the aftermath afterwards, and say everything was perfect. Senator McBroom says he anticipates that the Senate Oversight Committee is going to have a full report on all things election 2020 in a few short weeks. Devin Sandra, back to you. All right, Mara, the rapidly climbing COVID cases have local hospitals on edge, worried about what the next few weeks are really going to look like. There's also growing concern about the spread in younger people and children. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here now with a closer look on that. Doc? Yeah, Sandra. So, you know, we've checked in with U of M's chief health officer, Dr. Preeti Milani, throughout the past year. She is also an infectious disease specialist. And today, she's among those highly concerned about the new surge in cases and the relaxed attitude so many people are taking when it comes to protecting themselves and others. In just a few weeks, we've gone from being one of the lowest to being one of the highest. And the rate of increase is what's really concerning. Dr. Milani believes there is no single reason for the surge, but says the more contagious variants are likely playing a role. We do have evidence that B117 variant is widespread in Michigan and is likely contributing to some of the really rapid spread we're seeing. Unlike prior waves, what we're seeing now are larger numbers of cases in younger people, including teens and children. And this is very concerning, especially as Michiganders have been traveling in the last couple of weeks. School reopenings and youth sports are also a factor. It's not what happens in the classroom or during competition, but it's the social activities that happen within these smaller groups. Like many health systems, Michigan Medicine is seeing a shift in who's being impacted as more seniors are vaccinated. We are seeing younger patients. And what strikes me is these are people who have found a way to stay safe for an entire year and to get through three waves of infection and only to become infected now. Dr. Milani urges everyone to remain vigilant a little longer and get vaccinated as soon as possible. The biggest thing we can do right now is, is get vaccinated. Vaccination is not just about protecting ourselves, it's about protecting everyone around us. The situation in Michigan should be a warning to other states because Michigan's not unique and it may simply be that we're ahead of the curve, but with COVID it's never just one thing. Now, a recent University of Michigan poll of adults over 50 found double digit increases in the percentage of black, Hispanic and chronically ill adults who planned to get vaccinated or already had. Now, Dr. Milani encourages anyone who is worried about the vaccine to have a conversation with your doctor or another healthcare professional. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Doc. And if you need help finding a vaccine, we do have extensive resources for you. You can find it all on clickondetroit.com.
Man from Taylor was arrested today in connection with the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. 25-year-old Jeremiah Kaplinger is charged with knowingly entering or remaining in a restricted building, violent entry and disorderly conduct on U.S. Capitol grounds, and climbing on U.S. Capitol grounds. Kaplinger was expected to appear in federal court today. He's the seventh person from Michigan now to face charges in the Capitol attack. General Motors is looking ahead to a sustainable future, making a major commitment to the former Detroit Hamtramck assembly plant. The facility is now known as Factory Zero, and it's going to build the first ever Chevy Silverado all-electric pickup. The truck part of a previously announced $2.2 billion investment to produce EVs. United Auto Workers says the move is good for jobs. There will be about 2,200 of them when the plant gets to full production. Well, we know Cleveland has rock and roll. Nashville has country. Now another type of music is setting up its own National Hall of, National Hall of Fame right here in Metro Detroit. We'll tell you about it just ahead. Here's Steve. At a time when so many people are out of work, many business owners face a critical and unusual problem. Hearing that there's so much unemployment, yet we're trying everything possible to get anybody to work. Business owners offering jobs, which puts even a thriving business on the edge of survival. You worry that the next day, three or four people that don't show could be that breaking point. Why are there so many jobs that nobody wants? Coming up.